so I'm not sure whether you can hear it, but there's a lot of snoring going on here. Quiet snoring because it's the dormancy period. Hi everyone, welcome back to my greenhouse, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joe. What are the things that I'm actually busy with? What are the things that I do during the winter months and the dormancy period when most of my cacti and other succulent plants are actually fast asleep? They're in their dormancy, but nevertheless, it's a pretty busy time here in the greenhouse. So let me give you a little bit of an update about the activities that I'm busy with, but also what are my cacti up to? So what are some of the things that I'm busy with in my collection during these winter months? Well, it's not quite the potting and repotting season yet. As you might know from some of my other uh, videos, uh, that is an activity that I like doing, so potting and repotting, in the period towards the end of the dormancy, so late winter, early spring, very early spring. So usually it's uh, starting from, say, late January throughout February and into March, that's when I quite like to pot and repot. Uh, and there's a number of uh, good reasons for that, that of course, you know, I explain in a uh, dedicated video on that topic. But in short, it's mainly because my plants are in dormancy anyway. So minimal disturbance, if I repot them at that time, Provided, of course, they're repotted in very dry, just totally dry substrate. Um, but another reason, of course, is that the, the root systems are actually at, again, minimal or no activity during this period. And so uh, when I repot, there's actually minimal damage, if you like, to the uh, root systems. But just watch the video that I've mentioned, and there's a lot more good reasons, I think, for, uh, for that activity to happen during the winter months. But, as I say, it isn't quite potting, repotting time yet. So what I am doing, though, is preparing the substrate. Uh, I'm preparing you know, making sure that I have enough pots of the right size. Um, I've got quite a lot of my plants actually in terracotta plants, uh, sorry, in terracotta pots. And uh, so, you know, one of the things that I'll be doing again is I'll be going through my collection and plants that are still in plastic pots like these two. Um, these are two wonderful tallow cacti that uh, I acquired during the year and they came in plastic pots and I'd like to uh, repot them into uh, terracotta pots. Here's some of the plants that are waiting for the potting and repotting as well. Now that's the preparations for the potting repotting period. The winter months are also the perfect time to be preparing for the sowing of seeds in the spring. So in order to be ready for um, usually when I sow uh, cactus seeds, then that's uh, usually April. 
And so in order to be ready, of course, this is the perfect time to be, first of all, either buying or uh, trading with friends um, seeds from cacti and other succulent plants. And, um, you know, you can you can also buy seeds, of course, from uh, nurseries, from online um, stores that sell seeds of um, cacti and other succulent plants. But uh, a fantastic way, by the way, of, of also getting uh, very nice seeds for usually either for free or for relatively little money is through the various distribution uh, channels, if you like, that cactus and succulent societies have. So in this case, for example, um, I was able to get a whole bunch of fantastic cactus and other succulent plant seeds from the uh, German Cactus Society. They have once a year a distribution of seeds for a very, very affordable price. That's to members only. And uh, I know that other cactus and succulent societies have very similar schemes where you can, uh, as I say, for you know very affordable amounts of money, actually, you can acquire fantastic seeds, sometimes really rare, uh, you know, seeds from very rare plants that, uh, and that's because, of course, these are specialist societies and you've got members who are growing, um, you know, special plants, sometimes quite rare plants, and they collect seeds and they, uh, uh, they sell them or they donate them and then they're sold on behalf of the society um, uh, through these societies. So a great way of actually getting a nice selection of cactus and other succulent plant seeds. And so the point is, you want to be ready for the spring months to be able to sow seeds. And so you want to have those with you at home already. You want to have the materials, the pots, the substrate, uh, the name tags. You want to have all that. Uh, ready, if you can, uh, ahead of the springtime. So one of the most important things that I did in preparation for the winter months, of course, was to put up the insulating bubble wrap around the greenhouse. So on all four sides of the greenhouse, I've got a thick heavy duty bubble wrap that uh, I've placed outside and then insulating the roof of the greenhouse. I've got bubble wrap on the inside of the, uh, the greenhouse. And what I always do is uh, I've got these uh, aluminium rods that I've placed across the length of the, uh, the greenhouse. And uh, they allow me to uh, splice the bubble wrap nicely between the rods and the roof glazing of the greenhouse. So uh, it stays in place quite nicely. Sometimes. I've got to stabilize a little bit with some uh, uh, adhesive tape, but overall it works really well to have the inside of the entire greenhouse uh, insulated, as I say, along the roof on the inside and then along the walls of the greenhouse, the four sides, I've got the bubble wrap uh, placed on the outside and then the door area is uh, it's got a, a special uh, sort of a double layer of the bubble wrap to insulate the inside and the outside of the door and uh, let me just open the door here and that gives you an idea 
you know, in order to avoid cold air rushing in when I open the door, I've got this sort of overlapping, uh, almost like an airlock type of entrance here, which uh, nicely keeps the warm or warmer air inside. So I'll just close the door again. And uh, we're back to the inside. Now, what else have I done? I, in addition to the, the bubble wrap, the insulation, I've of course got my, uh, so the most important appliances that I've got running, I've got a, uh, the heater. Um, so that's an electrical heater. So in front of the electrical heater, uh, some way in front of it, I've placed a dark granite rock slab, and that actually picks up quite nicely um, a fair amount of the energy, the warm air, and uh, and actually stores it quite nicely for um, for a while as well. So uh, that gives a nice uh, sort of a afterglow, if you like, of temperature to uh, to just store, if you like, a little bit more the uh, energy coming out of the electrical heater and fan. And then um, another appliance, let me just move over here. I've got a number of electrical fans that are placed in different parts of the greenhouse. There is a larger one up here. Quite, It's a more powerful one that actually um, helps to move the air about in the greenhouse and that of course also helps move uh, this one is placed towards the top of the greenhouse and so that of course then helps to distribute warm air that collects towards the top of the um, greenhouse of course so it circulates the air the warm air back down into the rest of the greenhouse so coming back to the main heater once again, um, it is actually connected to a thermostat. So a thermostat that regulates the minimum temperature that is kept. You can see there's actually two thermostats here, and that's because there's two compartments in my greenhouse, a slightly warmer, smaller compartment that is controlled by the thermostat on the right here. Uh, and that has a day and night time minimum temperature of 13 degrees centigrade. The one on the left here is the one for the cacti compartment, and that has a minimum temperature of six degrees centigrade. So once temperatures at night drop to six or below, the thermostat will kick in and will switch on the electrical heater to keep the temperature here at around six degrees centigrade. During the daytime, even when it's really dark gray and you know there's no sun anywhere, nevertheless the UV light coming through the clouds is enough to actually heat up the greenhouse a little bit and so you can see no heating but 12 degrees in here so that's quite pleasant really during the daytime. Now, although you can possibly hear the rain that's tapping on the glass roof of the greenhouse, you know, it's, it's a very wet season, not just cool, but quite wet until we get the first snow and usually in January, February, when it gets a bit drier and really cold here, then uh, that's um, when the humidity will also start dropping. But during this initial part of the winter here, it's a very wet time of the year. Uh, so the humidity in the greenhouse can also be relatively high. Um, now, some people actually, and I occasionally have um, dehumidifiers running 
in my greenhouse, but I do that only when the humidity is, you know, really above 85 or 90 percent relative humidity. So very, very humid for cacti. <laughs> A few more words about which plants beyond the cacti, so other succulent plants, need some watering during the winter months. And uh, there's sometimes a bit of confusion around that, uh, you know, you can treat all cacti and other succulent plants in the same way especially also during the winter months, that is definitely not the case. And as I've outlined in part one of the video, you know, there are a number of plants that also will appreciate getting a little bit of water during the winter months. Some of them, as I outlined, you know, the, uh, the elephant's foot uh, succulent, for instance, they actually have their main growing season during the winter. So they definitely will need some water as well. But um, a little bit of water is also appreciated by a lot of the aloes. And even though they might be standing relatively cool, they will still appreciate a bit of watering every few weeks. And that's really to, um, you know, ensure that they don't have their root networks completely uh, drying, drying up. So a number of my aloes, like I say, they're, they're in bloom at the moment and they are standing cool with the cacti, but... I do actually uh, give them a little bit of water every, in my case, two to three weeks, just a little bit of watering, some drops. Other plants that during the winter months will appreciate some very light waterings are Haworthias. So a couple of Haworthia plants that I'm growing here. This is the amazing Awarthia pooperi hiding in between pebbles. And equally also, a number of gasterias are actually happy about some drops of water every now and then during the winter months. There's a few more Gasterias, Armstrong EI. If you're hearing some bristling sounds, that's my camera that was just uh, combing over these Parodia heads in front. With their beautiful spines. Also my grapto petalum plants I'll be giving some small doses of water every two three weeks. They quite like that as well. Another group of succulent plants that actually have their growing season more in the winter months than in the summer months and therefore will need some watering now during these winter months are Kalenko. This one here already has its buds quite well developed so the flowers will be appearing relatively soon. There's a number of other Kalenkos that are growing here and um, like I say, they'll be requiring water during the winter months as well. 
plants from the genus Graptopetalum also quite like a bit of watering during the winter months. Another group of succulents that quite like watering during the winter months is the group of uh, succulents from the genus Adromiscus. They're beautiful plants and they have their main growth period during the winter months as well. Now, outside of the realm of succulents, I also grow in my greenhouse a couple of so-called cold house orchids. So these are orchids that don't require tropical or subtropical temperatures to thrive. They actually quite like the cool temperatures of a succulent and cactus house. Uh, here, for instance, this wonderful Cymbidium orchid which is in full bloom currently. And uh, you can see they will obviously also need some watering during these uh, winter months. Another orchid that I love growing, and I've been growing this one for many, many years, it's an Odontoglossum grande. It's got the most spectacular blooms once a year and they start developing in these cool winter months as well so again the trigger uh, or the temperature the lower temperatures you know um, being the trigger to uh, to start the growth of uh, flowers buds and flowers Now, quite a number of euphorbias also have leaves, and a number of them will actually now, during this cooler, drier period, will be shedding those leaves, as you can see here, and um, they'll in the new season, they'll be growing again as well. Not a problem. Many of my caudiciforms are also now retracting some of their shoots and leaves from the past growth season many of them will be shriveling up and drying up and uh, you know the plants will shed these leaves that's perfectly normal and they'll uh, be just going through the uh, dormancy period like many cacti and then having basically shed having dropped all the leaves from this past growth season they'll uh, in spring start growing new ones i let them climb all the way up to the top of the the greenhouse here in in my collection you can see towards the back there there's uh, a whole bunch of shoots and leaves from these uh, caudiciforms down here now in between some of the cacti i've also got plants that you know look horribly dead but they're actually doing perfectly fine these in this case this is a, a comifora a, um, a, a sort of a arid loving uh, plant i don't think it it's officially you know a succulent plant but it is a wonderful plant that I grow in between my cacti and it sheds all of its leaves as we go.
go into this cool and dry time of the year. So it looks pretty dead, but believe me, once it's shed all its current leaves and has gone through this dormancy period, come spring, it will have the entire plant covered in bright green, new shoots, new leaves, and it will, like the cacti, move into a new growing season again. Well, I hope I could give you a little bit of an idea of the things that go on in my collection, in my greenhouse, during this winter break period when there's relatively little going on with regard to growth and flowering with the plants. Nevertheless, quite a lot of activity, quite a lot of things that need to be done. And uh, hopefully you got a little bit of an idea of, uh, of those in my collection anyway. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then of course, I'd be very happy if you clicked a like and equally, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, a great way of supporting would be to subscribe. So please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon so that you get automatic notifications of every new upload to the channel. Thanks so much for joining today. Thanks so much. And as always, wishing you not just happy growing, but also happy dormancy. Thank you.